Professor Daniel Martins from Federal University of Santa Catarina made a great presentation on the importance of screw theory for mechanism that puts all of this in a more articulate way. I'd like to thank him for this great presentation. Hello, my name is uh, Professor Daniel Martins. I'm from the touristic island of Florianópolis in the southern part of Brazil at the Federal University of Santa Catarina. Uh, first, I would like to thank you, Maddie for the invitation to explain about the screw theory, uh, its applications and the importance of a screw theory for the robotic um, field. Well, uh, well, we, we have some uh, competitors to screw theory. The, the, the first one should be the, the navier hartenberg Convention, but uh, they are quite limited in, this, in the sense of understanding what really happens underneath the, the, the robots. Here we have some, some robots here. Most of them are serial and when you have a serial robot like this one or this one the procedures are straightforward using the Navi Hattenberg but whenever you have a closed loop things go a little bit complicated so uh, and the other part that I want you to talk is that uh, screw theory is uh, quite important for the designing of new robots and new mechanisms whenever I, I talk about robots, I could say mechanisms. That is a broader uh, concept that includes all the robots as a subset. Well, the screw theory uh, and other types of uh, representations, I can, we can say that there is some complexity and some simplicity in, inside. Uh, on the left side, you have here a robot, a special robot, uh, with some uh, kind of uh, complexity, but whenever you use screw theory, you have here a single reference frame. So we have in this case one reference frame only. On the uh, right side, you have a representation using the DH notation, and you can notice that there are a lot, lots and lots of systems, coordinate systems, lots and lots of frames of reference. So despite the right side being a, a most planar robot, this uh, system is quite uh, complex to model. The Navi Hattenberg has some, it's a straightforward manner to to, to do has only four parameters that's uh, interesting but there is so many frames that the the, the things gets a little bit complicated and the other point is that the Navi Hattenberg and others are most concerned with the kinematics of the robots so Whenever you go in the rabbit hole of uh, screw theory, you understand you have a, lots of positive ex externalities. You have a, a mathematical um, approach, you have mathematical tools to solve, and you think about the problem of uh, path generation, designing the, the joints, the, the position, the relative position of the joints, perpendicularity, parallelism, so, uh, yeah, and you have some kind of, kind of beauty inside that is whenever you realize that you are really understanding the, uh, the under the hood of the robot. Using a screw theory, you have an extra layer of positive externality that is the integration between kinematics and statics. Most of the other types of representations like uh, the navier and uh, enhanced the navier and so on, they are only focused on the kinematics. But screw theory uh, is a dual set. 
you you really have an uh, understanding what you are free to move, that is the kinematics, and what you are constrained to move, that is the statics. So you gain two in a one. Here you have a mechanism, it's not a, a robot, but it's the same approach, that uh, is a, a lots of, it, it's an automatic transmission uh, of a, a common vehicle. Uh, so you have this representation, and here we can solve with a single graph the kinematics, and on the uh, on the middle here you have the statics, and all of them you can put in a, such a kind of a, a, a matrix matricial approach and solve it. Well. All the derivatives of screw theory is this um, deeper consciousness that you have of what you are really designing. So for design a new robot, a new mechanism, you have to have such a kind of a deeper uh, perception of the reality in order to do not over constrain, do not have loose parts. So in this case I have a, a, a robotic bed, it's like a a mechanism, but it's a, a robotic bed that has several degrees of freedom. The robotic bed has some kind of uh, topology, and having in mind how this topology uh, evolves, how the kinematics of the joints and the statics of the joints, you can derive a variety, some simpler varieties, some more complex varieties, and you can design new kinds of robots. In this case, a new type of robot, uh, robotic bed. And in this sense, you get you have uh, uh, an extra layer to, to do new patents and new innovation. Well, the, for a short introduction, uh, this is my uh, contacts here. You can contact me whenever you want. And uh, uh, I will Thank you again, Maddie, for inviting me, and I'll be open to any questions if you want, just contact me. Thank you.